My name's Ian McDowell. For 15 years I worked as a nightclub bouncer in East London. My life was full of crime and violence, but that all changed on one night. Come on, come on. 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 Come on, Bodybuilding um, filled a big vacuum that seemed to be in my heart or my life at that time. I remember, um, I remember feeling like my life uh, wasn't worth living. Everything in life seemed, you know, not important. And uh, and I remember as a kid, I always had these dreams and hopes that I'd be somebody. And uh, and suddenly finding myself unemployed and not being able to get a job and having no hope or future, bodybuilding suddenly filled that gap. And um, I decided that I would be the best in the world of bodybuilding. I would do whatever I could to win the competitions and, uh, and you know, and as I was a young man, I started to find myself in newspapers and the bodybuilding magazines and stuff like that, winning trophies and competitions, and uh, it, it, it just kind of uh, increased. I kept thinking, you know, I will be the best. The problem of that was, was I got to a stage where, um, I made a decision to uh, uh, take anabolic steroids. And it was the usage of anabolic, anabolic steroids that really destroyed my life. It was that that got me involved in the, the doors and the crime. The problem with the door work is there was a massive part of me that enjoyed it. I enjoyed the, the buzz of having a bit of power on the door. I enjoyed the violence. Um, the downside was when you're going home and you're on your own and you start to think about yourself. The fear that creeps in, always wondering who's going to come knock down your door, having a contract put out in your life, people telling you they're going to shoot you, and, uh, you know, uh, making enemies, having your car uh, blown up and things like that. You know, there's a fear and a paranoia that works its way underneath that. Six nights a week in the clubs, clubs East London, all the time working and uh, uh, sort of in that, maybe breaking up three, four, five fights a night, working some of the rougher areas in East London. And uh, that has to have an effect on you, doesn't it? Um, so just being a miserable person generally, really. The more violence you get involved in, the more it doesn't bother you anymore. You know, the more times you hit someone, the less effect it has on you inside. And inside was becoming dark, and uh, I just didn't care. I, I, I believe I lost the capacity to love and to be loved. I, my heart was full of anger and hatred, and um, I just hated people, really. It was, a, it was a strange thing looking back. But really, it all came to a head one particular night. I was working in a club in North London, a uh, place I've been working at for a couple of years, where I'd had all sorts of uh, rows and, uh, and fights every night of the week made so many enemies in this part of London. Well this was the night that really changed my life and um, I remember it was like a night like any other and um, a, a bit of a rowdy crowd in the back there and um, they were tanked up and you knew that there was going to be a bit of a pain. We'd had our eyes on them and I knew it was going to kick off so we went over and there was about five of us working. We got around the guys, we started to move them saying listen mate, you know it's enough tonight. I remember as we got into the foyer there was kind of the door area and there was some people shouting and swearing I remember and it was like suddenly a couple of punches and as they started to struggle we started to push them and then their arms were flying and this thing bundled them big time straight out the door it was kind of a hit first job the doors come crashing open we sting them out here smashed them out and there was there was about eight of them I suppose about five of us we got them out here off the pavement area and I remember literally that's it you've had enough guys and, and coming back and trying to bump the doors up so that the night was over you know and um, I remember as we got up to the steps I told them they had enough and uh, to get out of here and uh, I remember as we got inside a couple of minutes and suddenly bang, bang. So we come barging out. Just at that point that we came out here, they, a petrol bomb, one of them had filled up and made a petrol bomb and smashed the door. And even though I was two weeks away from going to court, I remember, you know, I knew that I had to do something about this. I thought otherwise we're going to get in all sorts of trouble. So, and I see the geezer, I clock him over here in the car park. So I come out in the car park. And here he still is with another petrol bomb straight in his hand and I remember running up to the car park. He just stood there looking at me as if like, as if I, I was out of all this. I'm shouting at him, what are you doing, you know? And uh, he's looked at me, he's gone like nothing. And he's a big tall bloke and I remember cracking him straight in his mush. He's gone down and I pulled out the knuckle dust and I teared into him. And that's when I got all the blood all over I me. I remember screaming, what do you mean nothing? You know, you just turned the door. And, and as I said to you, it was the night that changed my life. I remember going home that night and initially I felt proud about what happened to me. Initially I felt, 
you know, you know, I, I dealt with the situation. I felt good about it. The boys had said, yeah, you know, we've we done the business. And um, as I started to drive home that night, that was the night I really started to think about the possibilities of God. But what am I doing? Why am I living like this? What is life all about? Why am I like this? And uh, I, this was the night I had the gun in the boot, the bat under the seat, I'm covered in blood, I pulled the car over and I, I remember saying, Jesus, if you're real, could you forgive somebody like me? Could you change somebody like me? And uh, that particular evening, I felt that love of God that I was telling you about saturate my heart. I felt as if my heart was cracking. You know, my heart had been hard up until this point and I remember as if it was kind of cracking and I felt like this love, as if I was being embraced by a, a, a father loving me for the first time in my life, you know, and um, I became a Christian that night. I sat and cried my eyes out, looking at the blood on my shirt. I said, Jesus, forgive me, change me, and um, my life has, uh, has never been the same since. That was the night that changed my life. As I started to go to church and, and as I started to pray to Jesus, I felt the, the paranoia, the fear, the hatred, the anger, it seemed to leave my heart, it seemed to disappear from me. Um, I seemed to stop swearing. I just didn't feel like I wanted to do the things I used to do. I felt, and I believe I felt like I had the capacity to love again. I suddenly realized that, you know, my family was important to me and, um, and I neglected and abused my family. And um, I realized that, you know, there was more to life than, than just selfish gain and ambition. Let's go. God can restore and change me and the way I think and the way I feel, he can do it to anybody. Ian McDowell is, um, is different. I, I, I'm different from what I, I was, obviously, and um, now I'd say I have the ability to love and, uh, uh, and that's why I do what I do. I don't believe I'm a do-gooder with nothing better to do than travel the country, sharing my story and, 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 and telling people about Jesus. I, I do it because I, I really believe that Jesus is alive and my heart has been changed. And I can feel his love in my heart. And um, so Ian McDowell is um, a, a different man than what he was.